Today is Thursday, June 17th, 2021. Welcome to today's daily prayers. Our theme this week is signs of God's kingdom. Let us pray. Our Lord Jesus, who turned water into wine as a sign of the new kingdom. In you, the old has passed away. Behold, you make all things new. Give us today a superabundance of the bread and drink you provide, that all our noble desires may be satisfied. Through your strong name, amen. Our psalm this week is Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, true life of heavenly forces. My very being longs, even yearns, for true life's courtyards. My heart and my body will rejoice out loud to the living God. Yes, the sparrow too has found a home there. The swallow has found herself a nest where she can lay her young beside your altars. True life of heavenly forces, my King, my God. Those who live in your house are truly happy. They praise you constantly. Those who put their strength in you are truly happy. Pilgrimage is in their hearts. As they pass through the Baca Valley, they make it a spring of water. Yes, the early rain covers it with blessings. They go from strength to strength until they see the Supreme God in Zion. True life. God of heavenly forces, hear my prayer. Listen closely, Jacob's God. Look at our shield, God. Pay close attention to the face of your anointed one. Better is a single day in your courtyards than a thousand days anywhere else. I would prefer to stand outside the entrance of my God's house than live comfortably in the tents of the wicked. True life is a sun and shield. God is favor and glory. True life gives, doesn't withhold good things to those who walk with integrity. True life of heavenly forces, those who trust in you are truly happy. Our daily scripture is Matthew 20, verses 20 through 28. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus along with her sons. Bowing before him, she asked a favor of him. What do you want? he asked. She responded, Say that these two sons of mine will sit, one on your right hand and one on your left, in your kingdom. Jesus replied, You don't know what you are asking. Can you drink from the cup that I am about to drink from? They said to him, We can. He said to them, you will drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left hand isn't mine to give. It belongs to those for whom my father prepared it. Now, when the other 10 disciples heard about this, they became angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called them over and said, you know that those who rule the Gentiles show off their authority over them, and their high-ranking officials order them around. But that's not the way it will be with you. 
Whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you will be your slave. Just as the human one didn't come to be served, but rather to serve and to give his life to liberate many people. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Consider your personal life ambitions. How does God and God's kingdom fit into your ambitions? Is there anything you need to reconsider so as to be more aligned with God's kingdom? Have you ever felt like God was asking you to do something that was more than you could handle? In other words, has God asked you to drink from a cup that you weren't comfortable with? The idea that greatness comes through serving others runs counter to the way of life we are taught to pursue. What would you like to say to Jesus about this teaching? reading today comes from Every Bush is Burning by Joan Pools. Where are the gentle spirits and the prayerful souls among our leaders? When will we trust the qualifications of credible lifestyle and courageous witness as much as articulation of programs and financial expertise? When will we die to the styles of government and authority that characterize our secular society and choose the style of gospel? So that what is most evident in those who direct and encourage us is their pilgrim status, their ability to listen and to learn and to change, and their global sensitivity. Persons who can share their own spiritual adventure and who release and affirm others to do the same. Let us pray. Jesus, you came to serve others rather than to be served by others. You show us that God values the humble spirit and the loving heart. Through your death, you show us that salvation comes through giving our lives for others. Help us to incorporate this difficult teaching 
into our everyday lives. We pray for those who are in positions of leadership. May they understand that their responsibility is to serve others, not to glorify themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are called to ministries that require courage and deep faith. May they put their whole trust in you so that they can step out into the unknown and accept whatever happens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that whenever we are called to ministries that involve leadership or risk, that you will strengthen our spirits, guide our steps, and keep us humble and brave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Receive this prayer of benediction. O oh Lord, as at Cana's wedding you filled empty jars with new wine, so I ask that you fill me. O oh, glorious provision. Amen. Go in peace.